My name is Chris Jolly, and I am director of Pregnancy Help Center, as Kevin said. I've already seen people walking around with baby bottles. These baby bottles, we are asking if this church would support Pregnancy Help Center by taking a baby bottle. No pressure, no fuss, but if you would take a baby bottle home, each family, one per family or one per couple, the little girls love them and they want to take them home too and then they end up in a toy box or something. But if you would take this home today and bring it back on Father's Day, full of change or other things, we get a lot of pocket lint, um, buttons, we had a ring once, but when these bottles come back in, last year we raised over $23,000 in baby bottles. Different churches all over the county. That would be just an incredible thing for you to support the center. Let me tell you what the center does. We are a very, very small nonprofit ministry. We are dedicated to serve Christ by meeting the needs of women and families who come in needing our help. And we do that in a variety of different ways. We do a free pregnancy test. And depending on the result of that test is how we determine how we can help our clients if they want our help. If the test is positive and she wishes to continue her pregnancy, to give birth to her child, to parent her child, whether she be single or married, whether she has children already, or this is her first time, we will help her as much as we can in that process. And it's scary. And so if she needs help making uh, different housing arrangements, or if she needs help finding finances, if she needs help trying to find medical assistance, we can help her with that. And then we also have you know, maternity clothes baby clothes, diapers, baby furniture sometimes, blankets, sleepers. You can't imagine all the things that we have at our center to give to our clients. And we don't buy any of it. It is all donated. We exist because of the generosity of God's people. And so we are able to say, your test appears to be positive and we can help you. It's a pro-life ministry. If you're going to say you're pro-life, then you better back it up. Not good luck. Not hope you do well. But back it up. We're here to help you. It's scary. If a woman is not planning on being pregnant, if she's not prepared, it can be scary. Whether she's married or whether she's single. If that test is positive and she is thinking, maybe I want to place this child for adoption. I'm not prepared to be a mother. We can help her with that. We don't, we don't do adoptions there. It would be a, a tremendous conflict of interest. But we can hook her up with birth mother counselors from various adoption agencies in the state. And they can actually come to us and meet her there. Because a lot of times our clients just don't even have the transportation to get out of town. So we're able to help. And unfortunately, in all the years that I've been a part of the center, I've only seen a couple of adoptions successfully go through. Um, it's a shame that more gals don't choose that. But at the same time, I can't imagine making that choice. It's, it's got to be very, very difficult. If the test is positive and she wishes to terminate her pregnancy by having an abortion, we will, not assist, we will not assist her in that. We will give her information. We're not going to make her feel any worse than she already does. She feels bad. Maybe she's scared. People come in, scared to death, confused, under pressure, ill-informed. And she thinks the only choice she has is to abort. Maybe her boyfriend says, if you don't, I'm out of here. And she will choose the relationship which she can see over the relationship with a child that she cannot. 
or she's scared that she's not going to be able to do it and have enough money. Maybe her parents are going to kick her out of the house. As believers, can we understand why women abort? Can we? Understanding doesn't mean condoning. We sing that beautiful old hymn, No One Understands Like Jesus. If he can understand us in our sin and our brokenness, can we not understand each other? So we will help her to see where she is in her pregnancy, how big her baby might be. We have little fetal models from seven weeks to 30 weeks. And it's interesting because I do a lot of um, health fairs and, and talk to little kids about fetal development and this is how little you were at one time. And they're kind of squishy, you know. And it's interesting because little girls, they immediately, they just, oh, they hold the babies and they're nurturing and they love them. And little boys want to see if they bounce. <laughs> there is a difference between the sexes. It is a woman's legal right in this country to choose to abort. We will not prevent her from making that choice. Somebody's going to lock her in the room, show her horrible pictures, traumatize her to make her make a choice for life. There's no reason to be heavy-handed. There's no reason to traumatize someone. And if she does leave our center and goes to an abortion clinic, we follow her with our prayers. She can't stop us. I always like to tell people that. I'm going to pray for you. You cannot stop me. And if she does abort, she may be traumatized. Maybe not initially. Maybe not for a year or 10 years or 15 years. But at some point, she may feel the consequences of her decision. It's a life-altering decision for a woman, a life-ending decision for that baby. There's no denying that's what happens in abortion. And, and many people think that in church we shouldn't be talking about this because it's political. It didn't start out being political. God is the author of all life. We are here because of him, not by chance because he put us here. And as I was preparing for this morning, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? And I was sitting beside a pond out at uh, Snug Hollow Bed and Breakfast over the weekend, which is a lovely place. Men, you should take your wives there. It's a lovely place. And I was just praying, God, you got to break it down for me a little bit. And it was beautiful out there. And you can't hear a car. It's out at the end of the road in Estill County. You can't, you can't go any farther. And I'm sitting under this blue sky in front of a pond and the trees. And God, in your immensity, break it down for me. And what he did was to speak to me about how the great God of the universe chose to make a woman's womb the sacred place for his son. That means something. That means something to us as a church. Do we have the courage to defend life? Not just unborn life, but all life. When a woman comes to us and she is pregnant, we don't want her to feel as though she is only important to us because she is pregnant. She is important to us because she is created in the image of God, as is her child. So we can love them both. If that test is negative, meaning that she's probably not pregnant, then we talk to her about lifestyle choices. If she is an unmarried woman, there's a reason that she's there for a pregnancy test, and those choices are not the right choices for her, whether she's a believer or not. 